I lost 80 pounds in about six months. I lost 117 pounds. I lost 100 pounds. I've lost 105 pounds. In the last year, I've helped people lose a total of 15,000 pounds. At 17, I weighed 360 pounds. I felt miserable and no self-esteem. Getting out of a chair was a challenge for me. I knew I had to take action. I was able to totally transform my life, losing 160 pounds and inspiring thousands of others to do the same in their own world. Welcome back to Afternoons on 11. We are joined now by weight loss guru, Charles D'Angelo. And Charles, I couldn't help but think, what were you thinking when you were sitting over there listening to Edgar share his story? Because you lost 150 pounds too. Well, I was so moved. I mean, to see this young man who's been inspired, looking at the right things, looking for inspiration, looking for hope. He messaged me not long after he started his journey on Facebook and told me about all the changes he was making and how he, for the first time ever, made the decision to take charge of his own disciplines because he recognized that no one could change his life other than himself. And I always tell people that your health is in direct proportion to your disciplines. It's not a magic diet. There's not a magic pill. You don't need a surgery. You don't need a magic shake or drink. You need to change your attitude, your philosophy, your mindset. And he hit it right on the head by saying that there's what I call the three-legged stool of success in weight loss. You have to have a healthy eating plan. You have to be eating about five or six times a day. You need to make certain that you're exercising consistently and you're making it enjoyable. One thing that Edgar and I discussed prior to coming on the show was what did he replace that addiction mm -hmm. of overeating, of eating the wrong foods with? And he said that he replaced it with healthy exercise. He started for the first time ever to find the way out of negativity with a positive addiction rather than a negative. And so by having healthy exercise in place, by having the right foods in place, and by really reconditioning his mindset, he was able to lose now 170 pounds. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's isn't awesome. that remarkable? That is remarkable. So, I mean, 170 pounds that quickly. I mean, who here in the studio audio, audience owns a diet book? Who at least owns one diet book? One diet book? Any, any of us? Anybody? Yes. Right? Almost Same. everybody yeah. in the audience mm -hmm. is holding up right. their hand. So we know the answer isn't another diet. The answer isn't another machine or another DVD. The answer is really taking responsibility for your life, recognizing that the only thing that will limit you is your own mindset anything is possible. Your history, your genetics, the story, the narrative that you come up with so far is what's driving your life. And if you're willing to abandon excuses and focus on progress, really working on creating goals that are going to make you a better person, you'll never ever have to worry about achieving the things you're after. What was it for you, Charles? Because I look at your before after <laughs> pictures too and it's like, oh my God. Well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it was just amazing. I think that a person gets to a place where they have enough leverage. When a person comes to me, uh, whether they're 15, 16, 17 years old, or if they're 75, 80 years old, I've helped people that are Academy Award winners, I've helped national level politicians, I've helped teenagers, stay-at-home moms and kids. The real secret lies in finding the motivation or finding the leverage. What's gonna be the thing that's gonna push you over the edge? For Edgar here, it was saying to himself, I'm not gonna let other people define me. I'm not going to settle for this standard or this definition that people have outlined of me, calling me fat, calling me obese, making fun of me. I mean, I can relate. You asked how did I feel when Edgar was talking. I used to be the kid that would come home and sit uh, at home in front of the television with a entire pizza, a two liter of soda, a box of breadsticks. And that was something that was a culmination point for Edgar. One of his best friends that was helpful told him, you're killing yourself. But there's really no amount of someone telling you that that's enough. It has to be what resonates with you. So if you're watching at home, you're asking yourself, you're sitting there and you're saying, that's great, this young man lost 170 pounds and this Mr. Fitness lost 160 pounds. And you're saying, but that's not me. That's not true. The reality is this, anyone can have what anyone else has if you're willing to do the same things. If you're willing to pay the price of discipline, you have to have the right attitude, you have to have the right philosophy. If you have a limiting philosophy telling yourself that I can't have it because my family's all overweight, or because both of my parents are diabetic, like in Edgar's case, both of his family, all, both of his parents and his brother has struggled with obesity. If he would have looked at that and said, because of that, right. I'm never gonna be able to have what I want, mm -hmm. he would have ended up in an entirely different place. Instead, he found an empowering meaning. We can't control what happens to us but we can control the meaning of what is happening. So Edgar took something that was negative and said, I'm gonna use this as a positive. And turn it into a positive. I'm gonna say, how can I use this? What can I get from this? Mm -hmm. So take the challenges in your life and start to ask yourself, 
What's the seed of equivalent benefit? What opportunity is here for me to learn from? And recognize, you don't need a magical diet or a trainer. You don't need some magical exercise equipment. You need the right mindset. And with the right mindset, anything is possible. Right. And tell me about your book. Oh, Think and Grow Thin. Yes, I wrote Think and Grow Thin, which Edgar picked up, ironically. <laughs> yeah, he wrote to me after getting my book. Because, Edgar, you can talk about, I mean, what really resonated with my story that helped you? This, the part in this book that just pushed me even more to my motivation and lead me to a better fitness life was when I read the section where someone, like a friend, had invited him to their house, mm -hmm. and there was kids outside that house just pointing at him, making fun of him, saying these horrible names. That, and that resonated with you. That resonated with me, yes. That yeah. that made me cry and it yeah. just it tore me apart like you know, there is no excuse for anyone to sit there and say they can't lose weight. And it, I'm glad that you didn't let it affect you to the point that you didn't do it. Hold that thought. Sure. When we come back, we will check your comments. We are back after this.